or the, the key point with this is that all the reasons that I was bullish for gold, which are now we see playing out, I think the evidence is clear in front of us that the reasons why I said 2024 was going to be a great year for gold, we're seeing that play out now as you and I speak. But we're seeing it play out from an area, you know, from gold already at 2,500. Whereas when I made that call, we were still fooling around with 1,900, 2,000. So I was thinking, hopefully, maybe gold will end up 2,500 by the end of the year. We're already there. And now the things that I think are bullish for gold are starting to happen. So, you know, I, I, I don't want to make crazy numbers out there, but just, just think about it. You know, a, a modest, let's say, 20% gain from where we are now. And, you know, in a major bull market, gold can easily go up 50%. Um, if we just go up 20% from where we are now, that pulls us close to $3,000 gold. Lobo Tigger begins by addressing the common perception of him as a gold bug, someone perpetually bullish on gold. He clarifies that while he indeed sees gold as money and believes in its long-term value, his approach to gold isn't a static one. Instead, he views gold both as a safe haven and a speculative asset, responding to market conditions rather than adhering to a permanent bullish stance. Gold, according to Lobo, is not just another commodity like coffee or copper. It is a form of money that has stood the test of time. This intrinsic value makes gold an essential part of any portfolio, especially during economic uncertainty. However, Lobo is quick to point out that his bullishness on gold is not unconditional, it's informed by the economic environment, particularly the fluctuations in the dollar and broader market trends. Lobo's analysis of the current economic situation leads him to believe that 2024 could be an extraordinary year for gold. He bases this on several factors, including the likelihood of a recession, the labor market's challenges, and the potential for rate cuts by the Federal Reserve. These elements, in his view, create a perfect storm for gold to rise. Lobo explains that during recessions, gold typically performs well as investors seek safe havens. Additionally, as interest rates are cut, the appeal of gold increases since it doesn't yield interest, making it more attractive compared to other assets that do. He also discusses how inflation, despite having a low direct correlation with gold, often follows gold's lead. For example, gold spiked in 2020, anticipating the inflation that emerged in 2022. This pattern suggests that gold often serves as a precursor to broader economic trends, reinforcing its role as a leading indicator. A question that Lobo often encounters is whether gold has already priced in the upcoming economic changes, given its recent rise. His answer is a resounding no. While gold has seen significant gains, Lobo believes that the full impact of the economic downturn and subsequent policy responses like rate cuts and potential money printing have yet to be fully reflected in gold's price. He argues that the smart money is aware of this and is positioning itself accordingly. Despite the Federal Reserve's efforts to control inflation and stabilize the economy, Lobo expects that renewed money printing could lead to another surge in gold prices. Even if the Consumer Price Index CPI continues to track toward the Fed's 2% target, the underlying pressures from money supply increases could drive gold higher. Now we'll show you the best clips of the latest interview. But first hit the like button, smash the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss out our daily recaps. First and foremost say, okay, you know, gold bug likes gold. Why are we even talking about this? What kind of, what kind of headline is that? But I'm not a, well, I was going to say I'm not a perma bull, but I'm talking about gold and versus the dollar, these fluctuations and speculating accordingly. And that's not a constant. As a person who believes that gold is money, as I just said, there's no time that I wouldn't buy bullion to add to my stack. That's like saying, you know, Lobo, um, how much is too much money or how much is too much savings? You know, I'm never going to have too much savings. I'm always going to want to add to my stack. So yeah, am I a perma bull on gold? Sure, fine. You know, but don't dismiss me because last year gold was not my highest conviction trade on this more speculative side with the stocks and things. That was uranium. That worked out quite well. Uranium doubled last year. I'm not saying therefore I'm bullish on gold, so gold's going to double this year, but it's up already. And in, in, I have to say, again, I'm not trying to portray false modesty here. I'm trying to be accurate. And the reasons why I said that gold was my highest conviction trade for this year, like uranium was last year, had to do with what we're talking about now, the recession, the labor market breaking down, as we're seeing now. 
Gold pulled a hockey stick before that happened. So I had a lot of people telling me earlier this year, oh, you're such a genius, you know, gold's up already. Well, yeah, but not for the reasons that I said. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because another pushback might be, you haven't asked this, but a pushback might be, well, gee, Lobo, gold's up already, you know, has it priced in what you're talking about? And so my answer is no. The points are recessions, going into recession in particular, tends to be bullish for gold, rate cuts. Uh, you know, gold famously doesn't pay interest. That's a bullish factor for gold. Inflation, if you directly correlate inflation and gold by CPI, it actually has a very low correlation. In my view, though, that this is because gold leads inflation. So gold spikes in 2020, the inflation doesn't kick in until 2022, and it looks like there's no correlation. But gold was telling you what's coming. If the money helicopters fly again, as I expect them to this year, I think the smart money knows this. And I think you'll see a lot more deep pockets piling into gold, even if inflation CPI, at least, continues tracking towards the Fed's arbitrary 2% target. And then the money printing, you know, filters through the economy. We start seeing real assets go up and inflation goes back up again. So, you know, that that's the leading factor there. I'm sort of losing my thread of thought here for where we're going with this question. But the argument or the, the key point with this is that all the reasons that I was bullish for gold, which are now we see playing out, I think the evidence is clear in front of us that the reasons why I said 2024 was going to be a great year for gold, we're seeing that play out now as you and I speak. But we're seeing it play out from an area, you know, from gold already at 2,500. Whereas when I made that call, we were still fooling around with 1,900, 2,000. So I was thinking, hopefully, maybe gold will end up 2,500 by the end of the year. We're already there. And now the things that I think are bullish for gold are starting to happen. So, you know, I, I, I don't want to make crazy numbers out there, but just, just think about it. You know, a, a modest, let's say, 20% gain from where we are now. And, you know, in a major bull market, gold can easily go up 50%. Um, if we just go up 20% from where we are now, that pulls us close to $3,000 gold. That's not a target. I'm not promising it. I'm just saying. You know, that, that would not be a huge or outsized increase from where we are now, given the bullish factors that I see ahead of us. And the best news I can say about this is really an extraordinary opportunity that we have is that the investors have been so bearish, even gold bugs. You know, every time gold goes up, they say, oh, it's going to get crashed. You know, the, the SmackDown team is going to come knock it back or the manipulators or whatever it is. There's, you know, it's almost like, a, you know, a battered spouse. It just doesn't want to admit that, it, you know, there's any change there. The gold bugs, if the gold bugs themselves are bearish every time gold goes up or fearful every time gold goes up, what about the mainstream? They're not gold bugs. They don't believe it's money. So the, there's been this really enduring negativity about gold stocks. Uh, even though we've had nominal all-time high after all-time high in the gold dollar exchange rate, that's creating a terrific opportunity. You, you'd think with gold at, and I keep saying nominal all-time highs because in a real term, you know, we're a long way from an all-time high in gold. But you, you'd think those headlines of all-time highs in gold would have gold stocks soaring to the moon, and they're not. Now, either you know, this time is different and gold can go to the moon and the stocks do nothing, which I don't, I just, I don't see that happening. Or there's an opportunity there. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, the, the good news is if you feel like, oh, I missed it, gold's already at all-time highs. Well, no, if your purpose is to speculate, then there are still great gold stocks on sale. And I think that's fantastic. Lobo emphasizes that even a modest 20% gain from current levels could push gold close to $3,000 per ounce. While he is careful not to make any promises, he points out that in a major bull market, gold can easily see a 50% increase. Given the bullish factors he sees on the horizon, such gains are not out of the question. Interestingly, Lobo highlights a unique opportunity in the market right now despite gold reaching nominal all-time highs. Investor sentiment remains bearish. Even gold bugs, traditionally the most optimistic about gold, are cautious fearing that every rise in gold's price will be followed by a manipulation-driven crash. This pervasive bearishness, even in the face of record prices, 
suggest that the market has not fully embraced gold's potential, leaving room for significant upside. Moving beyond gold itself, Lobo discusses the opportunity in gold stocks, which have not kept pace with gold's rise. Normally, when gold prices hit all-time highs, gold stocks soar. However, this time around, gold stocks have been lagging, creating what Lobo sees as a fantastic buying opportunity. Well, there's several things that we can say there. Uh, quickly, it's actually good for companies to model lower gold because if they have a very aggressive price in there, I, I really like to call it the gold dollar exchange rate because in my mind, gold is money, making it a Forex question. It's, it's not like pork bellies or coffee or something that you have the price of. But as far as the actual business of making money mining gold goes, I like that a company like Barrick has, you know, a, what is it? A, a, they, they built their mines on $1,300 gold. And I'm not sure what their current model is, but I would bet you <laughs> gold that it's well under 2000. It's nowhere near where we're at now. And that's, that's good. You, you should plan for the worst and hope for the best as a miner, because hmm, usually you get, you don't get the best. Um, as far as gold underperforming and why isn't it higher? Well, Inflation is coming down. You know, the mainstream doesn't believe gold is money for there. There are many reasons why, particularly from sort of the, the not gold bug perspective, why gold should be actually lower. I think the fact that gold is any, you know, above 2000, let alone around 2500 uh, is a real testament to a sort of emperor has no closed moment. Like the, the mainstream perspective, gold is just a pet rock. Right, it has no no real intrinsic value. There's no reason for it to be holding on at all. So I, I think that we're actually, I see gold as outperforming the metal itself. Right? I see nominal all-time highs in gold right now as a real outperformance given the headwinds that gold has faced. I mean, we have a, a pivot now with the Fed, but until then, you know, we had higher for longer. That was in the mainstream view bad for gold, and yet gold stubbornly held on and went up anyway. I I see that as strong evidence of a, of an emperor has no closed moment. So I'm pushing back on the the idea that gold is underperformed. You know, given the mainstream perspective, and remember the people who who trade these comics contracts and things that we quote for the price of gold. That's not you and me going down to the coin shop. Those people who do that, they don't think that gold is money. They just think it's another commodity like coffee or copper or whatever. So it's really impressive to see it do as well as it has now to the stocks you know i have to say a lot of the companies really mismanaged the last big surge we had in gold uh, my friend rick roll i'm sure you've interviewed him before on wealthy on numerous times you know, he likes to point out that in the last big cycle from 2001 to 2011 you had gold go up sevenfold and you had the you know the major producers as a group um, deliver negatively uh, in terms of you know actual free cash flow. You know, the, you know never mind you know, massaging the bottom line, but in terms of cash flow, you know where the rubber really hits the road. To have your your the commodity your business is based on go up sevenfold while your cash flow goes negative, and I did the math on this. I have a chart somewhere on my website on this. Uh, you know they really did manage to lose more money at the same time. So if you're Again, not you and me, uh, but you're a Warren Buffett type or a Main Street type, and you look at it and you say, "What a crappy business!" You know, why would I buy those stocks? That's the recency bias right now. So gold is up, but the last time gold is up, the gold miners bungled it. Why would you buy those stocks? To me, this isn't surprising from a mainstream perspective. But here we go. Here's an interesting thing. You know, I, I talked about my hard landing call and how that's starting to happen now. Another thing that I wrote about before, I, I wrote an article, it's available for free on the website called, Are Gold Stocks a Broken Asset? He explains that gold mining companies like Barrick Gold often model their operations based on conservative gold price estimates, for example, one e $300 per ounce. As a result, when gold prices rise well above these levels, these companies see substantial profit margins making their stocks an attractive investment. Lobo notes that many investors, influenced by the poor performance of gold miners during previous bull markets, are hesitant to jump in. This recency bias, however, overlooks the improvements that many mining companies have made, positioning them to capitalize on the current environment. 
Lobo delves into how the perception of gold miners is slowly changing. In the past, gold mining companies were criticized for mismanaging their operations, even during periods of rising gold prices. However, Lobo points out that recent earnings reports from major gold producers show a different story many are beating their guidance and delivering strong margins. This shift, according to Lobo, could lead to a broader re-evaluation of gold mining stocks, especially if the economic downturn intensifies and investors start seeking out companies with strong cash flows and defensive characteristics. He suggests that even mainstream investors, who typically dismiss gold as a pet rock, might start to see the value in gold mining stocks as these companies demonstrate their ability to generate profits in a challenging economic environment. And in there, I said, this was earlier this year, I said, now, the thing to watch for is earnings this year. You know, we have higher metals prices, gold dollar exchange rates up. If they bungle it again, you know, they deserve to be in the doghouse. But if they deliver the improved margins I think they can, that's the sort of thing that starts getting people to pay attention. And that's happening. We saw in Q1, all three of the major, you know, the three largest U.S. gold producers all beat. You know, they didn't necessarily do spectacularly well. Barrick and Newmont, both the top two, have idiosyncratic issues is what the talking heads on, on financial media like to say. So you know, neither of those is my favorite gold company, but they still beat guidance. And in Q2, we're starting to see, you know, margins doing again, um, it, margins going up again. You know, so this time, I'm not promising that they'll all do great. And, you know, I'm not saying all miners are angels. But it seems like as a class, as a group, the gold miners are doing a better job of not fumbling the football this time, of actually doing what they're supposed to do as miners, which is not to defend, you know, you know, the nobility of gold or silver as real money their their job is to make money and they're doing it and i think that matters i think that changes the perception of the industry and one more thing i know i've gone on a long time on this answer but if i'm right about the recession the real world is going to hurt earnings and people on wall street are going to be looking around okay what really works and, and maybe they keep piling into the NVIDIAs of the world because they love the future of AI or whatever. But when it comes to like who's actually you know delivering the goods in a world where a lot of mainstream companies are hurting, if the gold miners are actually delivering, they become a bright spot. And that could actually attract a lot of capital that is um, asset agnostic. Like they're not buying because they believe it, gold is money or, you know, or they're just buying because it's a business that's making money. I can see a situation by the end of this year where even Warren Buffett types who dismiss gold as a pet rock could look at the actual business, which is making money. It's got increasing margins, has a great moat. Warren likes a moat, right? It takes years to permit these mines. You can't, even if you discover one, you know, it takes a long time to prove it up, deliver a feasibility study, finance the project, build it, permit it. All that stuff takes so long. So the people that have the goods in hand now, they have a natural moat that defends them in a business that as long as the management doesn't screw up, which is not a guarantee, but so far so good, you know, has increasing margins. I, I actually think that we could see, well, I don't want to get too crazy with my predictions. And, but if gold goes where I think it's going, the gold stocks don't get left behind. If in that world, money is looking for bright spots for businesses that are actually working in a tricky environment, I think that could actually provide an extra tailwind for the gold miners out there. Mm -hmm.